Okay, the last type of square root simplification that we're going to talk about is dividing radicals. Now there's one thing you need to keep in mind with dividing. You are not ever allowed to have a square root in the denominator of a fraction. It is not considered simplified if there's a square root in the denominator. So I always look to see if I can simplify anything first, and then if I can't, then we have one other step that you need to do. So the nice thing about example one is I have two perfect square numbers. The square root of 49 comes out to be a whole number 7, and then the square root of 64 comes out just to be 8. So now I've gotten rid of the square root in the denominator, and I've simplified my answer. So number one, the final answer is 7 over 8. Now with number two, I have a fraction underneath a square root. So first I'm gonna to look to see, can I simplify that fraction? And actually you can, because 18 is divisible by six, and 18 divided by six is equal to three. So that would be the same thing as the square root of three, and we can't simplify the square root of three any further, so that's the final answer. Now in example three, I have two over the square root of seven, and I know I can't have a square root in the denominator. I can't simplify anything like I did in examples one and two. So to get rid of a square root in the denominator, you have to start by multiplying both the top and the bottom of the fraction by the square root that you wanna get rid of. So since we wanna get rid of that square root of seven, we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of seven. So on top, I'm going to multiply my outer numbers together, so 2 times 1 would be 2, and then just keep that square root of 7 at the end. When I multiply the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, I get the square root of 49. Now I can simplify that square root of 49, because I know that the square root of 49 is just 7. The last thing I want to check to see is, can I simplify the fraction 2 over 7? No, I cannot. So my final answer for number three is two square root seven over seven. Notice that I no longer have a square root in the denominator, so that's how I know when I am finished. So a few more of dividing radicals examples. If we move to this next example, example four, I have again the square root of a fraction, and because I can't simplify that fraction five thirds, that would be the same thing as breaking it up into two fractions, two square roots, I should say. So that would be the same thing as the square root of five over the square root of three. Now, to get rid of the square root in the denominator, we're gonna do the same thing we did in example three and multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root we wanna get rid of, which is the square root of three. So then on top, I would get the square root of 15. On the bottom, I would get the square root of nine. I know I can simplify the square root of nine to just three, and I can't simplify it any further, so that would be my final answer. Now in example five, same idea. I can't have that square root of six in the denominator, so I'm gonna multiply both the top and the bottom by that square root that I wanna get rid of. So on top, I would get two square root 30, and on the bottom, I would get the square root of 36. I know I can simplify the square root of 36 to just six. And then notice I can simplify this part of the fraction here. Two over six, that reduces to one third. So that would be the same thing as one square root 30 over three. Always simplify completely to get that final reduced answer. Uh, same thing with example six. Let's multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of six to get rid of that square root in the denominator, so then I would get three square root 12 on top over the square root of 36. Now I know I can simplify the square root of 12 on top, so that would be the same thing as three, and then square root four times the square root of three, and then I can simplify the square root of 36 on the bottom to just six. If I continue to simplify the top, well the square root of four is just two, so that would be the same thing as three times two, which is six square root three on top. And then I have six on the bottom. I can reduce six over six just becomes one square root three. So that would be the final answer for example six. So those are a little bit trickier. They may take you a little bit more practice, but the more practice you get with them, the more confident you should feel. 
So now we're going to kind of move on and talk about how to solve quadratic equations. We've already kind of been doing this throughout the entire school year, factoring, factoring and solving, but let's just kind of review some different types of examples of quadratic equations. The general equation for a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This is kind of our standard form. So a is the coefficient in front of the x squared, b is the coefficient in front of the x, and c is just the constant number that stands alone. Now before we can factor a quadratic, we always want to get our equation in standard form. That means get your equation equal to zero, have the a come first, then the b, and then the c. Now you'll notice in example one that we're missing a b. So because we're missing that middle term, that b term, there's a couple different ways that we can solve a quadratic equation. Anytime we're missing a b, I usually try to get the x squared by itself. So to get it by itself, I would add 9 to the other side. So I get x squared equals 9, and then I would take the square root. Now anytime you take the square root or you have a quadratic equation, you're always going to have two answers. And I know that the square root of 9 is 3, but because it's a quadratic, I'm solving a quadratic, I am going to always have two answers. So it would actually be positive 3 or negative 3 because I know positive 3 times positive 3 is positive 9 and negative 3 times negative 3 is also going to be positive 9. So don't forget that when you do it this way and you solve using by taking the square root, you must put a plus or minus in front. Or some people just prefer to write out both answers, positive 3 or negative 3 either way. Now in example two, we do have all of our terms, so I am going to get it in standard form first. So I'm going to subtract that x and put it in the middle of my equation. So here is my quadratic equation in standard form, and now because I do have all three terms, I'm going to see if I can factor it. So what would be two numbers that would multiply to negative 20 that would add to negative 1? Well that would be negative 5 and positive 4 because I know that negative 5 times 4 is negative 20 and negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1 so you're kind of looking at that middle term and the last term. Now we're not done yet once we have it factored we have to set each parenthesis equal to 0 to get our two answers. So we're going to set x minus 5 equal to 0 and x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve both of those equations. So when I solve the first one, I get x equals positive 5. When I solve the second one, I get x equals negative 4. So those would be my two answers for example 2. Example 3, notice I am missing the b term. I don't have just an x. So I can solve it the same way I solved number 1. So I can get the x squared by itself by first adding 21 to the other side. So then I would get 2x squared equals 240. Then I'm going to divide by 2 to get the x squared by itself. So I get x squared equals 120. And now I'm going to take the square root. 120 is not a perfect square number, so I need to reduce it just like I did um, with the simplifying radicals. So what is the largest perfect square number that divides into 120? 4 is the largest number, perfect square number that divides into 120. 4 times 30. And then when I take the square root of 4, I get 2 square root 30. Because I took the square root, don't forget to put plus or minus because I do need to have two answers since I'm solving a quadratic. So the final answer would be plus or minus 2 square root 30. Okay, three more examples of solving quadratics. This next one is already in standard form and I do have all three terms, so I'm going to try to factor this one. What are two numbers that multiply to positive 30 that add to negative 13? Well, something that would multiply to a positive but add to a negative would have to be two negatives. So I know that would be x minus 3 and x minus 10. When I set each of those parentheses equal to 0 and I solve them, my two answers would be x equals positive 3 or x equals positive 10. Now this next one, uh, example 5 throws a lot of people off because we're missing a C term, so we can't solve it using square roots. The only way we can use square roots is if we are missing a B. 
Um, but notice that there is a GCF, a greatest common factor, something that both terms have in common. We could factor out 1x from both terms. So our GCF would be 1x. And don't forget to write that GCF in front because one of the biggest mistakes I see are a lot of people forget to write it. So if I have two x's and I take away one, then I have one x left. And then I have plus seven and I had one x and I took away one x, so there's no x's. Once I have it factored to this, I do need to set both of them equal to zero. So the first one would just be x equals zero. That has to be one of my answers. When I solve x plus seven equal to zero, I get negative seven as my second answer. So make sure you always have those two answers. Now in example six, I do have all three terms. I do not have a GCF. There is no number I can divide two, 13, and 20 by other than one. Um, so I'm gonna need to factor this a little bit different. First, I'm gonna look at my A. My A is a two instead of a one. So the only two numbers that multiply to positive two are two X and one X. So that's going to have to go in the two parentheses. Now I'm going to look at my last term. I have 20. So I want two numbers that multiply to 20. So there's a couple different things we can try. We can try 4 and 5, or we can try 2 and 10, or 1 and 20. So those are all the factors of 20. So now we're just going to kind of place them in either parentheses and do a guess and check method. So I always tell students, remember how you FOIL, all you really need to check are the outer and the inner terms and make sure that those two terms add to our B term. So let's just say we pick four and five. So let's say I put plus four here, plus five here, and now I wanna do FOIL, but I don't really need the first or the last because I already know that the first and the last are gonna work out. I just need the outer and the inner. So if I check my outer terms and I multiply those together, I get 10x. If I multiply my inner terms together, I get 4x. Now if I add those two together, I get 14x. That unfortunately does not give me my middle term, 13x. That's what I'm trying to find. So I can either reverse the four and the five or I can try another set of numbers. So let's go ahead and try something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of erase this. And I'm gonna erase the foil. So this is kind of the thing about guess and check is you always have to double check the outer and the inner and make sure that they add to that middle. Okay, so let's just say I reverse the four and the five. So now I'm gonna put the four over here and I'm gonna put the five here. And let's check the outer two terms. So two X times four is going to give me eight X. And then I'm gonna check my inner and I get five X. And eight X plus five X does give me that 13. When I add them together, it gives me 13 X. That was what I was trying to find. So now I know I factored it correctly. Okay, but I'm not done yet because I need to set each of those parentheses equal to zero. So I need to set 2x plus 5 equal to zero. And I need to set x plus 4 equal to zero. But we know that that x plus 4 is going to give us negative 4 as one of our answers. Probably don't even need to solve that equation. But this one's going to give you a fraction because first you'd have to subtract 5. So you get 2x equals negative 5 and then divide by two, and you can just leave it as a fraction answer. So x equals negative five over two would be your other answer. So those are your two answers, and that's the trickiest one, is when your a does not equal one. So hopefully this kind of gives you a better idea of how to simplify radicals, solve quadratic equations. This should all be review from algebra. You should have already learned